Today's lesson is going to be the other special triangle. And when we just had the 45, 45, 90 with this couple patterns, that was pretty easy to work with. Now we're going to throw a whole second triangle in there, and this is where things get a little trickier. The other special case is called a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now, in order to get to this, in order to motivate this, we're going to have to find, start with an equilateral triangle, and you'll understand why in just a minute because this proves where it comes from. And it's really helpful to know that this isn't just some random pattern, but it actually has a lot of reasoning behind it. Here I have an equilateral triangle. And my equilateral triangle, okay, all three sides, whoa, it just moved. That was fun. Interesting things are happening with my equilateral triangle right now. Let's try this again. There we go. I'll bring my highlighter back. There we are. All right. Don't know why it was. It's a little slow there. Okay, so we got our equilateral triangle. And what's the measure of every angle in an equilateral triangle? All three sides are the same, so all three angles have to be the same. The sum of the angles is 180, so it's 180 divided by 3. So 60 degrees for each angle. Okay? So there we go. We're also going to call the length of each side 2y. I know that seems a little bit strange, but you'll understand in a second why we're doing that. It's basically to avoid having to deal with fractions. Okay, so here we go. Now we're going to drop in our altitude from the vertex of the triangle. So we're gonna create an altitude in that triangle. Okay, now you still our same equilateral triangle. There's my altitude. Because of an altitude, we know it forms a right angle with this side. Because an equilateral triangle, we also know that this point that it intersects is the midpoint. So these two segments have to be congruent. So that means this whole side, which is 2y, is now split evenly in two sides that are y and y. See? If I just said like y for each side, then this would have to be a one-half y and a one-half y. You'd have fractions, and we don't want that. So let's keep it simple. So now that splits evenly into sides of y and y. This angle in the triangle is 90. This angle in our triangle on the right here is 60. How many degrees does that leave for my triangle up here? Well, obviously 30 degrees. Oh my, there's our triangle. So we have our 30, 60, 90 triangle. It's half of an equilateral triangle. The question is how long is this longer leg? Because I know all three angles now. I know that the short side is y. I know the hypotenuse is 2y. How long is the long leg? Well, let's use Pythagorean theorem to find out. For the moment, I'm going to call this side n. So y squared plus n squared equals 2y squared. Not just 2y squared, but 2y squared. So y squared plus n squared. When I square 2y, I get 4y squared. Because 2 squared is 4, and y squared is y squared. Subtract 1y squared from each side. They are like terms, so they subtract. I get n squared is 3y squared, or n is the square root of 3y squared. The square root of y squared comes out, that's just y times the square root of 3. In other words, it's the length of the short side times the square root of 3. The medium side, the middle side, or the long leg, is the length of the short side times the square root of 3. There's my pattern. So there we go, 30, 60, 90 triangle. In a 30, 60, 90 triangle, we have three sides, a short side, a middle side, and a long side. The short side is the key. If I know the short side, the other two sides are dependent upon the length of that short side. So the short side is the key. The hypotenuse is twice the length of the short side. The long leg is root 3 times the long side. Now, 
You're saying, wait a minute, shouldn't, isn't the three bigger than two? Shouldn't that come first? No, it's not three times the length of the short side. It's root three, which is about 1.7. So, yeah, that is correct. As it says down here, clearly the key to doing this is to find the value of y, the length of the shortest side. The others are just multiples of that measurement. So if y equals 7, like you see down here, if this side was 7, the other leg has to be 7 times the square root of 3, and the hypotenuse is 2 times the short side. 2 times 7 is 14. Now, if I give you the hypotenuse, obviously it's pretty easy to find the short side, and once I know the short side, finding the other leg is very easy. The trick is when we don't, when we get the long leg, we'll get to that in just a second. Let's practice. Here I'm given the hypotenuse is 10. I need to find the short side and the long leg. The short side is A, the long leg is B. One thing I can do to make this process a little easier and I'm going to try to help you with is to draw right next to it my pattern triangle, oriented exactly the same way. My pattern triangle says this is the short side, this is the long side, this is the y root 3 side. Which side do I know? I know the 2y side. 2y equals 10. And I'll let you finish it from here to find the other two sides. The second example here, I'll do this one next, is a little trickier. It's almost the same. Um, if I put my pattern triangle next to it, this is the short side, the long side, the y root 3 side, and a 2y side equals 9. That's not an even number, so when I divide by 2, I don't get a nice number. I get 9 halves, which is fine. I can leave it that way. But then how long is the third side? Simple. It's a short side times the square root of 3. The long leg is a short leg times the square root of 3. Now, this pattern, remember, only applies to 30, 60, 90. And the 45, 45, 90, we'd use the square root of 2. The 30, 60, 90, we use the square root of 3. That's important to keep separate in your mind. We use the square root of 2 when we're doing the side that has triangle that has two sides the same. Using the square root of three, we use a triangle where all three sides are different. Here's where it gets tricky, when I know the long leg. Because now we've got work to do. Now I've got some algebra to figure out. I've got my short side here. Again, this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. If it's not 30, 60, 90, this doesn't apply. All these are automatically 30, 60, 90 that we're working on right now. Um, so we've got our short side, our long side, and our long leg. Short side, hypotenuse, long leg. This time we know the long leg is 8. Oh, gosh, now I've got work to do. But I can do the algebra. It's the y root 3 side equals 8. To solve the algebra for y here, I'm going to have to divide both sides by the square root of 3. So y is 8 over the square root of 3. But since we aren't allowed for now to leave radicals in the denominator, I do have to rationalize that. So that becomes 8 root 3 on the top, and root 3 times root 3 is just 3 on the bottom. Short side is 8 root 3 over 3. So the hypotenuse would be 2 times that. 2 times 8 is 16. Root 3 over 3. So there's our process. It's really not a pattern so much in this time. It's just doing the math. Let's try it again. Short side, middle side, long side. Pattern underneath, short side, 
middle side, long, long leg. Sorry, short side, hypotenuse, long leg. I said short side, middle side, long side, which I did backwards. Um, so y equals 2 root 6. So 2y is going to be 2 times 2 root 6. 2 times 2 is 4 root 6. The long leg here is going to be 2 root 6 times the square root of 3, which would be 2 root 18. But that simplifies. That's 2 root 9 root 2. So 2 times 3 root 2. 6 root 2 is the length of that third side. So we definitely have some radical work to do here. We have to know the pattern, we have to be, be able to compare it, and we have to be able to then do a little bit of algebra to solve it out. What are the two root sixes on the hypotenuse? Well, I've got the same pattern, okay? My pattern triangle still works. Slide it over there. Actually, I might slide it down just a little bit to give myself some space. So now I know that 2y equals 2 root 6. So y, dividing both sides by 2, y equals the square root of 6. And the third side is the square, square root of 6 times, or y times the square root of 3, which would be the square root of 18, which we just discovered is 3 root 2. This time, same triangle, same pattern, but now I know the long leg is 2 root 6. So that has to equal y root 3. How do I solve for y? Divide by the square root of 3. Now, fortunately for me this time, root 6 over root 3 reduces, doesn't it? Root 6 over root 3 becomes root 2 over root 1. Root 1 is just 1, so just y equals 2 root 2, which is the short side. Hypotenuse is 2 times that, so that would be 4 root 2. Using our pattern, we're able to set up and solve equations that help us find the unknown side. So what is that pattern again? This is your final question today. Identify the pattern one more time. We'll see you in class.